Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about destructive test of the weld. To qualify welding procedure, there are certain destructive and non-destructive tests are performed on the weld test coupons and among those tests, we will discuss about all destructive tests. Destructive test requirements are based on the code. So various codes are having destructive test requirements to qualify the weld joint. So based on that requirement, destructive tests are done. Sometimes destructive tests are also suggested by design engineer considering the performance, service life and application of that weld joint. Destructive tests are done once non-destructive examination on weld coupon is finished. This non-destructive examination include radiographic test, ultrasonic test, magnetic particles test and dye penetration test. Before discussing about the various type of destructive test, let's understand the requirement of the destructive test. Why and what is the critical requirement to perform certain destructive test? So some of the examples are stresses and loading condition of the weld joint. So throughout its service life, what type of stresses and what type of loading condition will be there for that weld joint? That is one of the consideration. After that, location of the weld joint, where this type of weld will be applied and what about the criticality of that location and what is the special requirement for that location. Then application of that joint. As far as the service of the welding is concerned, what will be the application of the joint throughout its service life? That is also one of the factor which can be considered. After that, technique of the joint. What type of special or specific technique will be done to perform the welding on field or at the actual condition that is also one of the consideration for the destructive test requirement. After that atmospheric condition, when you weld on the actual joint, what will be the atmospheric condition throughout the service life of the joint that is also one of the consideration to perform the destructive examination. And finally, life of the welding how long or what is the requirement of the weld joints life how long it will survive under various type of loads various type of repeating loads and if that weld design is adequate enough to survive that design life or not that is also dis decided by destructive examinations first destructive test is free band test it is very popular and common in stirred welding. So as you can see from the figure, this band test is done without any tool or any jig. The main purpose to do this band test to see the ductility of the part. Mostly when studs are welded, because of the weathering condition or because of the base metal temperature, sometimes stud doesn't get proper penetration to the joint and that is one of the reasons stud fails. So during the production of stud, every time before welding any specific batch, this free band test is performed. And once let's say three or five stud passes this inspection, then production stud or the numbers of stud required for the project are installed. Guided band test. As you can see from the figure, band test is done with the jig. And it's very popular for tubes, pipes and plates welding inspection. Root band and face band are very common for the guided band test. So either root side of the weld can be banned and further evaluated for the ductility or face part of the weld can be banned and further evaluated for the ductility. So this band test is done by bending the test coupon to the U shape and it survives all the way to U-shape, then it can be very adequate for the ductility. However, once the U-shape is achieved, the weld profile and the base metal is closely monitored. And based on that, it is decided that 
coupons are acceptable or not. Charpy Vinod's test. Charpy Vinod's test is helpful to understand about the fracture toughness of the weld. Fracture toughness is one of the property of the metal. So whenever there is a sudden load or sudden impact of the force applied on the weld or applied on the metal, the way it behaves that is based on its toughness. So the tough material has a better capacity to absorb the energy before it fails. It is very important for the welding material to fulfill the toughness requirement under the sudden loading condition. This type of application is very helpful in structure industries as well as earth moving machinery industries and it's less popular in piping industries because there is less amount of sudden loading conditions as far as the piping industries are concerned. So during Charpy V notch test 45 degree notch will be created on the weld joint and that is considered as the weld coupon or weld specimen and 45 degree notch is examined under triaxial loading condition. On this triaxial loading condition coupon, sudden loading from the pendulum which is applied and kinetic energy of the pendulum is transferred into or absorbed by the coupon and that converts into the energy absorbed by the material in joules. So more kinetic energy it absorbs before it get fail that is showing more toughness of the material more amount of heat which will be absorbed by the material before it fails. So this type of test is very helpful to understand how much energy this material is absorbing before it fails. Sometimes this test is also conducted on the same coupon with various temperature application. By performing that thing you can also understand that at what certain temperature how much energy will be absorbed by the material before it fails. So this test can be performed various ways as you can see from the figure with various temperature and various type of kinetic energy generated from the pendulum. Shear test as you can see from the figure lab joint with the fillet weld is examined under shear test. Shear test is helpful to determine the shear strength of the weld joint. As you can see from the figure, pulling the weld from the both side can be helpful to determine the shear strength of the material. So force F which is applied on opposite side of the weld and before it fails, how much force or what will be the ultimate value of the force determines the strength of the material so force upon area that is your stress and that is your shear stress which can be determined. This type of test is done on the universal testing machine. So on the universal testing machine this type of coupons are clamped and force can be applied from the both direction and machine can tell you the value of what amount of force was applied during the failure of the material and based on that shear strength can be found. Nick break test. As you can see from the figure, soundness of the weld joint is determined by saw cutting the weld. This is similar to tensile test. This nick break specimen is break by the hammer clamping both ends of the joint or break by the hammer while one joint is free and the other joint is clamped. Once the fracture is happened, fracture surface is examined and it also examined for type of failure, what type of failure happened and also for any other discontinuities present in the metal. Hardness test. As you can see from the figure of penetrometer, Hardness can be determined by understanding the resistance of the surface against the penetration. Hardness is most important for weld area as well as the heat affected zone. Because of the heat transfer, heat affected zone which is the three 
inches approximately area around the well metal the hardness can be changed because of the rapid cooling or temperature changes so hardness test numbers can be get from the hardness and based on the hardness test number it can be determined to accept or reject the hardness of the metal hardness test is very important for the alloy steel or welding of the alloy material because it's having a various cooling rate it's having a different cooling rate based on the different welding circumstances and maintaining the proper hardness to understand the behavior of the metal under the cyclically loading condition is very important that is why hardness test is very common for alloy steel elevated temperature test as you can see from the graph metal temperature changes and metal property also changes so metal does not behave same at each all temperature so when it's very cold the properties changes and at the same time when it's very hot property also behaves differently so elevated temperature test is basically non destructive test can be the band test or can be the shear test can be the tensile test but it should be at elevated temperature or it should be at the different temperature and how metal behaves based on each and every temperature that that is noted that that can be noted and based on that behavior of the metal at different temperature can be predicted elevated temperature test is also helpful to understand the ductile to brittle transition so when temperature gets lower ductile metal becomes brittle but at what exactly or exact point or what exactly the temperature when the metal become brittle from ductile that can be also calculated from the elevated temperature test and this type of test is very important for the welding which which can be applied at the low temperature these are very important in ship building industries or low temperature piping industries or low temperature mining and drilling industries when elevated temperature can change the behavior of the metal at the same time the reduced temperature the low temperature can also change the behavior of the metal and finally corrosion test understanding the behavior of the well metal under the atmospheric or the weathering condition is very helpful to understand the corrosion characteristics of the metal more corrosion can affect the life of the weld and that can create a failure of the joint so corrosion test can be done to understand the ability of the well metal to resist the corrosion so if you see that corrosion impact is very high to that particular area or the application you can use the better filler metal which is having a good alloys which can be helpful to reduce the corrosion possibilities so during the corrosion test in laboratory the coupons with the different welding wires or different welding procedure samples are put in the corrosive environment and after a certain period of time how these metals are behaving and what type of corrosion is affecting how much depth or what thickness of the surface of the weld that can be examined and based on that the best filler metal with the proper circumstances of the weld can be decided this test is done on a timely manner so by the particular days or by particular months the test or the samples can be examined and determined what are the impact of corrosion which is affecting the weld metal thank you i try to cover most popular destructive test if i missed any please write down those test in comment section below so in case if anyone wants to know about it i can create a separate video for it